Wherever we look, it seems that artificial islands are appearing. From the Palm Islands in Dubai to the Hibiscus Island in the US, artificial islands are everywhere. Using Google Maps, you may be able to spot more than 450 of them around the world. The practice of building artificial islands dates back to ancient Egypt, and the Netherlands have been building these islands since the 1500s. One such island is now home to 400,000 people. Artificial islands may provide many benefits, such as promoting economic development and providing extra living space in overcrowded areas or housing people whose homes will be flooded by global warming. But did you know that they also come with certain disadvantages? The building of artificial islands can cause significant damage to seafloor ecosystems, which are absolutely vital to the health of marine life. That's why they need to be constructed with a great deal of care and attention. Artificial islands are built through a process known as land reclamation, which is the process of creating new land from oceans, seas, riverbeds, or lake beds. But some of these water bodies are also crucial for human and animal life. They may be important for providing food, building materials, nutrient cycling, and pollution filtration. When artificial islands are built directly over these already fragile ecosystems, they can cause permanent damage. Land reclamation can also threaten delicate coral reefs and seagrass beds. In Singapore, land reclamation is associated with a loss of nearly 45% of the country's intertidal reef flats and almost 40% of its intertidal mudflats. Since 1986, most coral reefs in Singapore have lost up to 65% of their live coral cover. But it doesn't have to be this way. There are ways to build artificial islands and protect the ecosystems underneath and around them. It just requires proper planning. So what are some methods that could be used to reclaim land that don't decimate marine habitats? It turns out that a lot can be done to both minimize the negative impacts below the waterline and integrate underwater environments into the new island's lives. For example, oyster texture envisions using an active oyster reef composed of a woven web of fuzzy rope that supports marine growth, generates a 3D landscape mosaic that attenuates waves, and cleans harbor water by harnessing the biotic filtration processes of oysters, mussels, and eelgrass. China is developing sponge cities, which use permeable surfaces and green infrastructures to reduce water runoff from cities. Similar techniques could be used to prevent runoff from artificial islands and prevent contamination of coastal areas. Future construction should also be carefully planned to ensure the preservation of important marine habitats. Instead of fragmented seascapes, developers could create corridors for climate migrants or for species most at risk from habitat loss. All this requires some considerate spatial planning and intelligent designs. So what is standing in our way? Why aren't we building artificial islands that protect marine life instead of destroying it? It's because these novel marine habitat saving designs remain untested today, particularly at large scale. But if we really want to build the island cities of the future, we must take a chance and try these solutions out. These design strategies and careful spatial planning methods that integrate seascapes and landscapes are the key to creating artificial islands where marine habitats grow and thrive and give back to the communities that support them. Now wouldn't that be a dream come true?